So this is a video about angular momentum and angular impulse. So in order to look at that, let's go back to the linear world. In the linear world, let's say we've got a mass here that's got a particular velocity. Uh, it therefore would have a particular momentum. The mass times velocity would equal that initial momentum. Then we apply a force over it over a certain amount of time that's called an impulse. Then what would happen is our object would move faster because it's got greater momentum. Okay, So in this particular case, momentum is not conserved because we've got an outside force. This force is outside of our system. Notice our block, our system is just a block. So there's an outside force applying um, being applied to our system. So our initial momentum is that amount and our final momentum is that amount. The difference in the two momenta is this impulse. So the difference in the momentum is equal to the impulse and the impulse can be calculated by taking the force and multiplying it times how much time that that force was applied. So the impulse momentum theorem says the change in momentum is equal to the impulse. And this, again, is an example of where um, momentum is not conserved. So let's take this to the angular or rotational world. So let's say we've got this disk. It's got a particular mass and rotational inertia. So it's spinning around um, with a certain angular um, velocity. Then we add an outside torque. So for... In the angular world, when we add an outside torque, that changes the angular momentum. So in this case, angular momentum is not conserved because there is an angular, I'm sorry, there is an outside torque being applied to our system. Now, if it was just an outside force, that wouldn't necessarily change the angular momentum. It's got to be an outside torque. All right. So... Um, our difference in our angular momenta in this case is what is called the um, angular um, the angular impulse. And to find the angular impulse, we take the torque and we multiply it times the amount of time that that torque is applied to our um, system. Okay, so the difference in the angular momentum, delta L, is equal to this h which again is the angular impulse and the angular impulse we can find by taking the torque and multiplying that times the amount of time that it's applied now remember one of the things that you should remember is torque is equal to force times r okay all right so let's look at an example so it says a solid disc with a mass of one kilogram and a radius of 0.25 meters spins at an angular velocity of 10 radians per second. The string that wrap, a string that wraps around the edge of the disc applies a 2 newton force tangent to the disc, as in the picture, for 0.5 seconds. What is the new angular velocity? Okay, so this thing's spinning, this disc is spinning, okay, at first, then, um, then the string is pulled using this particular force. So this particular force is applying a torque, all right? Because it's applying a torque, and that's outside of our system, the angular momentum changes. So our disk had this angular momentum to begin with. Now it's got more angular momentum after this torque is applied for that amount of time. So again, this angular momentum is not conserved because there's an outside torque applied to the system. So this angular... Um, this... Um, angular momentum, when we add it to the angular impulse, gives us our new final angular momentum. So we take this equation and we would plug it in. That angular momentum would be the angular, um, I'm sorry, yeah, that angular momentum there would be the, um, would be the rotational inertia times the angular velocity. Okay, that would be that value there. Then H, again, is the angular impulse. That's the amount of torque times time. And then the final angular momentum would be 
the final angular velocity times the rotational inertia. Okay, so one of the things you, you need to remember is this torque is the force times the distance r, where r is the distance from where the, ang the axis rotation is to where the force is applied. So that torque is F times R. We're going to multiply that times T to get our uh, this value here. This is the value of H, which again is our angular impulse. Um, our I, our rotational inertia is 1 half MR squared for a disk. And it gives us the initial velocity of 10. So this value right here should be 10. Okay, I didn't plug that in, but again, that the value would be 10. So we have all the values on the left, all the values there, and then all we have to do is solve for this final angular um, velocity, okay? And again, that initial angular velocity is 10. I just forgot to put it in. So that's how you would go about solving this problem.